Hello YouTube, this week I want to shoot out a solid state Marshall versus an all valve Marshall. It's the 100 watt version of the HDFX, the MG series, the old ones, shooting out against the JCM 2000 DSL 50 watt head. So, let's have a look at them. Okay then, we have the MG, which is solid state on the top, and the JCM 2000, which is all valve at the bottom. So, let's start with this. It's a 100 watt all solid state head, hence the 100. It's the old version, which is the HDFX. The new one has a big round black button and has MG in big letters, and I don't like those ones. I've tried them in practice rooms, not my thing. Quite fizzy in my opinion. So this has a clean channel, which is switchable to a crunch, and you have an overdrive channel, which is switchable to even more gain, OD2. We have an effect, which goes for chorus and delay, delay, chorus and flange. Effects level controls the level, well, how loud the effect is, how much it influences the signal. Reverb is different, that's a separate thing you can't turn on and off, it's just there in the background as much as you want. Effects loop, which is nice, and master volume, which is basically the volume for the clean, because the overdrive already has a volume. I prefer to make them match pretty much the same. Let's look at the JCM2000. So, again, there's a clean channel, and you press that and it goes to crunch mode. You've got a gain channel, you press that, it goes to OD2 for even more gain. Reverb for channel A, reverb for B. Um, EQ, again, is just overall, whereas the NG has an EQ for each section, which is arguably more versatile. So, you've had a quick look at them. The cabinet I'm using is my Harley Benton 212 with Celestium V30s in it. There's a foot switch for the NG, which switches from channel A to B, not within the modes, just from A to B or B to A, and for the effects like delay or whatever, chorus, whatever the hell. And we've got a single foot switch. I have one for the JSM 2000, which is just for switching channels. You can have it to switch channels or to switch the effects, sorry, the reverb on and off, but I'm just using it for channel switching. So let's go on to some sounds. Okay, this isn't an in-depth video because that would take forever with all the different options on these amps. So I'm gonna do a bit of clean, and then a bit of clean on the other, and then a little bit of crunch, crunch on the other. OD1, OD1, OD2, OD2. I just wanna see how they compare in terms of the gain structure, the dynamics of the amplifier. Again, they're both going through the same speakers. They're in the same place in the room. The camera, well, phone, is in the same place. So I'm trying to get it as accurate and scientific -y as possible. Um, the guitar I'm using is my Custom 24. It's a PRS SE Custom 24. It's one of the 2017 ones, which is really nice and pretty. Lovely flame top. Mm, it's all stock except for the upgraded capacitor, which makes it sound gooder, technical term. And lock and tuners because they're pretty and they work. So, oh yeah, it's got a new nut, but yeah, it's pretty much all stock. So. First, I'm going to put a little bit of reverb on. Uh, the NG has digital reverb, whereas the JCM2000, I believe, is an analog reverb. I believe it might be a reverb tray even, but I'm pretty sure it's not digital reverb. One thing to note on these amplifiers, when you're using the clean channel, the gain effectively acts as a volume for the clean. As in, when you push the button in and it makes it crunch, it takes your head off. So that, that is, that's a bit of a shame, and I guess that's why you can't put it in a foot switch. But yeah, basically the volume and gain are both volumes when it's just clean. These pickups are quite hot. So again, we're going through the clean. I'm gonna go through the GSM 2000 first and then we'll move on to the NG. So the gain's low, but the volume's high again. So I'm trying to make it pretty clean.
go on to the crunch, so the little button goes in. It gets stupidly loud, volume goes down, gain goes up. Sounds good. So that's the, uh, this is the crunch mode. Instability, it's a very hot day. jangly yet it's more compressed and well driven back to the first channel very basic my tone to the bass down we don't have it there's no eq on this there's only one eq so if i turn the bass down knock it off a little bit <laughs> Too thin for me now. I'd like a little bit more bass, so I'm just going to leave it 
basically where it was. But yeah, this is on the clean again. <laughs> OD. Let's go into OD2, which is just the more game. almost it's, it's like Mick Ronson's guitar you know it's very very piercing kind of honky <laughs> but again it's a more saturated tone it's more for what you need I mean if I was gonna do Mastodon say it's got that kind of plexiness but that kind of sag they have precise, very glassy sounding channel. Cleans up really nicely. Saturated, but it's got the same sort of characteristic the amp has. It's quite cockwarish. I do think that the more saturation. I do think that with different channels, the voicing of the amp does change. I mean, it, it's a bit of a chameleon amp. It's, it's meant to do a lot, and it, it does do a lot. But at the same time, it's quite annoying only having one EQ because when you change channels, it really does. It does need a little bit of tweaking here and there, just a little bit less bass, a little bit more, just give it a bit more clarity or just nip off the, the high end and make it a bit more palatable. So that's just my opinion. So that's the JCM 2000, let's move on to the NG. So I've got my NG plugged in now, you can hear the whirring in the background, can you hear it? It's got a big fan in there. It's really, I mean, in this bedroom, it's quite loud, if you're gigging, Ain't no one gonna hear that, it's, it's fine, it's not a problem. But just to, you know, set your mind at ease, it, I'm sure it would be fine, but here, it sounds quite loud. If you were recording or something, I'm sure it would be fine, because it'd be completely overwhelmed by the guitar noise. I don't know, noise? Noise. So, again, we're going through the clean channel, this is gonna be the NG. Uh, again, the claim, claim? Again, the gain, basically works as a volume for the clean, which is really strange, so I'll turn the gain up. Oops, put switch, sorry. Gain up.
that's the claim. jazzy sound. I'm going to turn the reverb down because it's a bit over the top. It's there, slightly in the background. It does, nice it does what it does. It does what it does, it's clean, it sounds all right. Let's move on to the crunch, where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins. And it's awfully loud, God. But loud, but it does jump up again. to roughly match the crunch on the JCM, so... Pretty close. Slightly more, I think. Oh, can you hear it jump a little bit? Okay, here we go, do fan club again. because I don't know, slightly scooped or brittle sounding somehow. That's better. A bit more bass as well. I mean, I'm talking tiny amounts because I'm trying to get it to sound in the ballpark, you know? Slightly trebly side. Here we go. Sounds got plexi ish. So it's about one o'clock, just about. Sounds 
cocks though. I want to take the treble off, I think, and raise the mids. Hang on. Take a little bit of treble off. Okay. Give the mids a tiny poke. I mean, I am doing tiny changes, so I just want to see. Okay. It's about the same volume as the plexi. sound it's very saturated the note sounds very pure it sounds quite plexus to me it sounds pretty close I'm pretty happy again ignore any tuning weirdnesses it's unseasonably warm and I'm melting so OD2 now is the same but I press this little button in here and I get awful amounts of gobs of gain oh I left it in, that was OD2. Well, there you go. I'll tell you what, I'll do some Mastodon. Brittle than the plexi. Even though I'm turning the bass up, it still sounds. <laughs> awful. Ugh. Well, it's alright, it's just too. It's too. saturated, not for punk. Not for rock. For metal, it's great, but it's too. There's a shrillness there. Maybe if I roll off more. No, I'll. Try the contour first, I'll make, make the contour a bit darker. It really comes through in the single plain strings, like single notes. No 
more, I'll get sued, I'll get sued. F Let's go back to only one because I missed that because I'm silly. That sounds all right. Gain up a little bit. So the gain's about nine o'clock and pop up a little bit. No, I put everything at 12, I think, actually. The EQ's at 12, and so it goes. Too trebly. Turn this down a little bit. close to me, maybe slightly uh, thinner. There we go. A little bit more contour to the dark side, slightly more mids though. If that isn't bang on, come on. That's been comparing a solid state cheap Marshall head with an expensive all valve Marshall head. Please let me know what you think. I think I got pretty close. I think the MG, to be fair, really got in the same kind of ballpark. It really is the minutiae of the EQing. Like, I find the MG has a very slight kind of fizziness uh, depending on where you set the treble and the contour. And again, it depends on my gear. I mean, the Custom 24's got high output pickups. To me, they're high output. Um, so when I use, say, my Les Paul, it's got Entwistle Paths in it, paths in it the, the Tanglewood. They're really low output on the two pickups. I don't really find I have that problem, but with the Custom 24, it's quite a bitey guitar, so that is that is a contributing factor. But anyway, let me know how close you think I got. My name is Al, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see ya. Bye. Bye!